Good morning, Americans. This is your favorite alien here on the morning of Thursday, March 24th, 2022. Stand by for an answer. Well, in the last three weeks, I've gotten emails uh, and people on the street who know me who have asked me this one question, and I've got about 65 emails uh, and uh, 60 questions, the same one. I've also gotten other emails. You don't, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. You keep on putting the Americans down, uh, you know, all kinds of nasty emails. Now, I've never put the Americans down. In fact, I've always been inspired by the American ideal. You guys put yourself down with what you did in the last 70 years. You caused what happened here. And you have to accept responsibility that you did it. You created the NATO nations. You created the United Nations. <laughs> you caused all this. You created the Soviet Union to be the way it was, and China the way it is right now. If you don't believe me, go check out Richard Nixon and his underhanded secretive mission that he had in 1971 that created what China became today. Okay? So that's on your things, not on me. And the question that everybody's asking me is, why Ukraine for Russia? And I always tell them, and I'll tell you Americans, the question shouldn't be why Ukraine. It should be why Poland and Ukraine. They both have a sensitive feeling to most Russians. They just never acted on it until Putin. Putin is like uh, um, how would you say Cassius and Bruce, Bruce against Julius Caesar or uh, Julius Caesar against Pompey yeah we never knew that one did you but let me explain why Poland and Ukraine In 1301, there was a creation of a little city-state called Moscovy. Yeah, Moscovy. By the Tatars. Tatars. T-A-R-T-A-R. Tatar. Okay. And the little city-state of Moscovy was manned by Slavic people. You controlled by the Mongols. Uh, yeah. Mongols. Oh, yeah. And mind you that in 1227 A.D., uh, Genghis Khan kicked the bucket. Uh, yeah, okay. So, by 1301, the most strongest of the Mongol empires was the Golden Horde. Yeah. So, the Moscovy city-state grew from 1301 to 1501. Big. By 1510, it was called Russia. You understand what I mean, Americans? Okay. And then the East, there was a small little country called Polsky. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, Polsky. Ooh. Yeah, you know Polsky, right? And it has nothing to do with ing old English Polish either, boys. Uh, yeah. But the Polish uh, were another Slavic group of people. And they developed a pretty good kingdom of Poland. And right next door to them, there was another interesting people, the Lithuanians. Uh, yeah, who controlled most of the Baltic at the time. Estonia, Latvia. Uh, uh, and parts of Finland. Yo, oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So Moscovy was heading east, and 
encountered these two guys. Yeah. Mm. Can you imagine the Russians uh, going east and then uh, going a little west? And, well, they encountered those two guys. Oh, yeah. And part of the thing that they controlled at the time was a little city on the edge of the Baltic uh, hmm. that would become... Petrograd, or as you Americans called it, St. Petersburg. Okay, yeah, but this is a little later in time. Uh, but <clears throat> Moscovy, or the Russians, because by 1520, it was under the uh, Tsar of Russia. And they spell it different ways. I've seen it spelled T or... Uh, S T A R Z C is in cat Z is in zebra A R Czar, which is the way I know how to spell it. Okay, Czar, which was the uh, Slavic word for Caesar. Uh -huh. Now you get it. Okay, Caesar, you Czar Caesar. So they were trying to recreate the Roman Empire with their own Caesar. Ah, uh, yeah, that's why it's Czar. Of Russia. You understand me, Americans? Yoo hoo! Are you there? Or is the cobweb still getting you? <laughs> okay. So, by 1682, the uh, Polish kingdom had uh, kind of ran into little bad times, and so have the Lithuanians. So they created the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. Yoo hoo! And they had their war against the old Moscovy, now known as the Russian Empire, uh, yeah, by the Tsars. And the point of contention was, yeah, you got it, Ukraine, you! <laughs> yeah. Well, they had a, a war in the Treaty of 1567, um, gave the Russians the eastern bank of the Ukraine. Therefore, they had the eastern part of Ukraine. The territories that are annexed by Putin, you Ah, uh, yeah, okay. And the western part was ran by the Lithuanian Polish Commonwealth, uh, you Ah, uh, yeah. And that was done from 1567 with ups and downs up to the uh, annexation of such commonwealth by Prussia and Russia in 1795, uh, yeah, where Poland ceased to exist, Lithuania ceased to exist, and it became part of the Russian Empire. Lithuania did, along with Estonia and Latvia. yoo -hoo! Now the Finns, uh, that's a different story. The Finns came to Russian fits. Oh, the Russians know about the Finns. yoo -hoo! Those Finnish guys. <laughs> you think the Ukrainians are bad? Try the Finns. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So here we are. 1918, the end of the war, by 1917, uh, Russia had to say, Uncle! The Tsars uh, were kicked out of power by V.I. Lenin. There was a quick treaty, and Russia got out of the World War I. So Poland was taken back from Russia and created as a nation they took part of Germany, too, because remember, the Prussians had uh, uh, annexed Poland in 1795 along with the Russians. It reminds, reminds you of 1939, huh? Uh, yeah, okay. So, well, Poland was becoming a nation again in 1918. The Polish are back, the Polish are back. Everybody with porgies, yo ho! Ay, yeah. And the Swahili is back, and Estonia is back, and Latvia is back, yo ho! Ay, yeah. Okay. And Ukraine's back, ah, yeah. Ooh, Ukraine's back. Mm -hmm. 
But Ukraine never got to be a nation. It was always uh, unincorporated territory. You know, like if you live in a county with unincorporated cities, yeah, well, that's the way Ukraine was between 1917 and 1922. Uh, yeah. Well, the so-called White and Red Russian War ended around late 1921 with the Red Russians or the Bolshevik uh, winning. Yes. So they went back and said, hey, Ukraine, yo, you're coming back to us and you're going to be the Ukraine SSR. And in 1922, the Ukraine SSR was one of the founding members of the Soviet Union. Uh, yeah. And by the way, the Crimea was still part of Russia because remember a century earlier, in 1856 to 55 to, uh, or what, 53 to 56, uh, the British found out that the Crimea War, all you found was cannons to the left, cannons to the right, and down the center road to 600. Uh, yeah, remember the Crimea War? yo <laughs> Yeah. Oh, boy, you Americans don't understand anything, do you? No comprehend anything. Oh, boy. Well, so that's what happened. That became part of the Soviet Union from 1922 to 1991. Meanwhile, Poland uh, was again invaded by the Prussians and Russians, or otherwise known as the Germans and the Soviet Union in 1939. Yoo-hoo! Same thing as 1795. So from 1939 to 45, uh, Poland was a disaster because... Uh, First, uh, Germans and the Polish went, I mean, a German and the Russians went to get them. And then uh, the Russians took the rest of Poland and went straight into Germany, took half of Germany. And by the end of 45, well, you had East and West Germany and you had Polish communists. So pierogi didn't taste good under the communists, did they? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, the Polish didn't like that too much. Although, unlike Hungary and Czechoslovakia in 56 and 68, they didn't bother to tell the Russians to go stick it. Because the Russians stuck, stuck it to them big time. So you can't blame uh, Putin for what he's doing. I mean, he's trying to stick it to Ukraine. Just the way that Khrushchev in 56 and Brezhnev in 68 stuck it to the... Uh... Oh, yeah. Hungarians and the Czechoslovakians today, the Czech Republic and the Slovenia, which, by the way, the Russians say you owe us a bit here. Uh, yes. So here we are. Oh, and by the way, during this time, after the war, the Soviet Union was controlled by a Ukrainian named Nikita Khrushchev, so he went over there and said, hey, uh, we always wanted the uh, Crimea Peninsula, but Russia always took it. So now that it's the Soviet Union and we are uh, friendly, uh, and it's the Ukraine SSR and the Russian Federation SSR, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, how about if, uh, hey, Russian Federation, uh, you don't mind ceding that to us. So in 54, he went to the Supreme Soviet, and uh, oh, he got his way, rubber stamped it, and the Ukraine got the Crimea. Uh, yeah. And that irked Putin later on, because remember, he wasn't born then. Or, yeah, maybe he was, yeah. But anyway, it irked him all through his life. And then the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991. Russia was under Boris Johnson. Oh, boy. Ugh. And the Americans decided, hey, we got the uh, thing here. The Soviet satellites have collapsed. Let's go in there and wave NATO. Yoo-hoo, NATO, 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 you, you. You don't know how you're going to get them in there because they, they haven't been nations for a long time. The only ones that know a little bit about nations are Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. The Polish, well, they only know a little bit from 1918 to 39. Um, but the other nations, Hungary, uh, Czechoslovakia was bought in 1918. That was a, 
uh, one of those United Nations messes along with Yugoslavia and other things that the United Nations and the uh, League of Nations messed up big time. So do you understand me, Americans? This is why you got to where you are. And who do you have to blame? You in 1945 for going back to the same situations that cost World War One and World War Two, and therefore cost World War Three. This is your favorite alien. Now you see, I don't hate Americans. I just hate the way they do things because they are costing World War Three again. The Russians, well, <laughs> the Russians are the Russians. They won't change no matter who you got up there. And the Chinese are the Chinese. You cost both of them problems. I.e., look under Richard Nixon, 1971 to 76 or 74, when he got kicked out of office. Uh, yeah, okay. But he did a lot of underhanded things with China that's cost you big time today. So this is your favorite alien. Good day. <laughs>